Welcome to the next episode of Come Rail Fan with me. I'm Steve Boyko. I'm standing here at mile 37 of the CN River subdivision waiting on a train. And that's the theme for today's episode, talking about waiting on a train. I've been out this Sunday morning looking at trains. Uh, I caught several of them before sunrise, which was kind of fun and different. Um, now I'm here at mile 37, which is between Eli and Portage La Prairie, Manitoba, and I'm waiting for a train to come along. Uh, it's a little after sunrise. You can see here that I'm standing beside some signals. Uh, the west facing signal is showing green on the north track, which is on your left, and it's yellow over red on a south track, which basically means nothing's happening there. So it's been sitting there green for a while. So I keep looking west, hoping to see a headlight. And uh, so far, nothing I, I see nothing there but the Oakville grain elevator down the way. So um, basically, I've been just pacing around here in, as you can see, the middle of uh, the prairie. Nothing around, uh, waiting on a train. So what can you do while you're waiting on a train? You can, of course, uh, whip out your phone and uh, check out all your social networks and so forth, which is fine. As long as you have an internet connection, then uh, you can certainly do that. You can do a little research. Um, sometimes I like to look at the rail news groups on, uh, on Facebook, see if there's any news on the track that I'm on. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, I'll pace around. Uh, what I did a little earlier was, while I was waiting here, is I flew my drone for maybe five minutes. I just flew it up over this field here and uh, basically took a few shots from the sky, trying to basically do a little, I guess you call it a little research on what the uh, shots would look like if a train was coming along. Kind of practice, I think. And I think that's one of the best things you can do while waiting on a train is to walk around and try different angles, have a look. Instead of just showing up at uh, a crossing or by the tracks, picking your default spot and getting your three-quarter wedgie, then walk around, try different angles, have a look and say, you know, like here, I look here and I say, yeah, well, I'm standing too close to the tracks if there's a train coming, but, um, you know, this is not a bad angle, well lit, but then you think, well, okay, what if I go across and I try somewhere else because you've got this pole line here so maybe the pole line might provide some interest like if you stand here you think well this is pretty good too if you include the pole it adds a lot of visual interest and uh, the, the pole might make it uh, a little more interesting or maybe uh, the, you think the pole's too too uh, restricting so you can go a little farther and maybe you frame up the train, the, you know, the lead engine between these two poles. That'd be a pretty good shot. The poles are well lit. The nose of the engine would be lit. You know, th this side would be in shadow, but that's not so bad. Or if it was a train coming the other way, you could look over here and say, yeah, well, maybe if I shoot like this, I got this big sun in the way. Well, maybe what I do is I try to position the sun so it's behind a pole maybe like that, a little better. And, uh, but if you zoom in and uh, crop the sun out, you look at that and you say, that's a pretty nice shot, right? Those poles silhouetted, you'd have this train silhouetted, that's pretty good. That's not a bad idea. And then again, you can go across the tracks again, try the other side. And I've been scouting and I kind of like this. If I have a westbound train, you know, coming out of the sun, normally that's not a great shot. But the nice thing is with a low sun, like it is for, the, for now, when you shoot this way, you get a nice glint. You see that glint along the rails there? How the rails are nicely lit up? The side of the train would be lit up too. So especially if you had like a container train or an auto rack train or something that can reflect a little light. Something that's white, maybe, or metal. 
you'll get a really nice glint. So I think this is the side to shoot it from. Although I don't, I don't mind the, the pole line over there that I showed earlier. So this, this is, I think, the best use of what you should do while you're waiting on a train is to try different angles. So over here, you could think, you know, maybe I've got an eastbound train. This is pretty good. This is a, this is a, you know, three quarter wedgie. Maybe you want to be a little closer to the tracks, you know, being safe. But maybe be a little closer to the tracks. Here's not so great because you've got uh, you got that brush there restricting the view of the rest of the train. But you, you still can get the locomotive passing the mile board. That's pretty good. And maybe frame it up like that with the with the uh, telegraph post there, or this one. That's pretty good too. If you get to about here, which is about as close as I'd want to get to a train on this track, that's for, for sure, then uh, this is really nice. It's too bad that shrub is there because you can get a really nice, you know, long, long shot here. But I'm, you know, this is, zoom out, there's my, there's my feet, there's the track. That's too close. So I don't want to stand there. That's my initial thoughts: is to is to walk around, get out of your car, walk around, um, check out different angles. And then maybe you can take some detail shots too. Maybe you want to take some glints along the rails, because you know that that low sun along the rails is pretty nice. I've taken a few photos of uh, this area here while I've been waiting. Um, some with the telephoto, some with uh, with a wide angle, and uh, you know you get some some. Uh, basic basic photos that you can you can incorporate into a story later or sell them as stock photos or whatever you like um, these uh, telegraph poles I used to think of them as kind of an annoyance but they're rare now and disappearing so uh, I photograph them a lot now while I'm trackside because they're not gonna last much longer you can see here the wires are all down on these just the poles happen to be standing, and not all of them are. You can see there's these three, but then there's a big gap where there's no poles. So the, the poles aren't going to last forever. So uh, they add visual interest, so why not include them in your shot? Beyond that, uh, the other thing you can do while waiting on a train is change positions. You can say, well, all right, nothing's happening here. Maybe I need to move. Maybe I can find a better spot. So you got to be careful with that because I've been caught many times uh, waiting on a train and uh, deciding to move and right after I move, train comes along and I miss it or I don't get the shot that I want. So uh, you got to be careful about that. Using a scanner would help. Um, I don't have a scanner with me so I have no idea if there's a train coming. The only thing I know is that the signal here is lit green but it's been lit green for the past half hour so that clearly doesn't mean a whole lot and I keep looking down the straight track here and I don't see headlights so I think I might be out of luck for a uh, train for a little while but it's the river sub so it's busy and I know a train will come I just have to be patient Beyond that, you could bring a railroad book or a magazine, read that. I have a subscription to Trains Magazine on my phone, so I could certainly be reading that. I like to get my exercise too, so I pace around a lot, because I like to pace while I'm waiting. Um, I know it annoys other people, but it makes me feel like I'm doing something. So I uh, pace back and forth quite a bit, and uh, keep checking the signals, and uh, just be patient. And also, uh, be grateful that I am out in a beautiful day like this. Um, it's getting close to 9 o'clock in the morning in mid-October. Uh, it's a little bit above freezing, and uh, it's a nice morning. It's really crisp, more, clear morning, and it's nice to be out in weather like this. Because um, the snow is coming, and although I like being out in the snow to take pictures, I, I can't stand out here for half an hour or an hour in the middle of winter. 
but it's just not uh, not safe and not possible. So that's uh, about all I have to say about waiting on a train. Um, recently, I have been doing a little rail fanning uh, here in North America, but I just got back from a trip to Scandinavia where I did some rail fanning while uh, I was there with my wife. We were, I was there for a conference and before and after the conference we uh, went and uh, to Denmark before and Norway after and took the train between places and uh, also did a little tram fanning and uh, rail fanning. Uh, not a lot but uh, I will be posting those on my blog at some point. There's already a tram video up on my YouTube as well as uh, riding the Thalus high speed train from um, it was from Amsterdam to Brussels on a different trip this summer so uh, that was fun and I, I really enjoyed the riding the Thales it's uh, it's a different experience to be cruising along at 300 kilometers an hour on rails uh, it's nothing we have in North America for sure and uh, it's amazing how smooth and quiet it is on those electric high-speed trains if you uh, get a chance to ride a, a TGV or other high-speed train in Europe, uh, take it. It is an interesting experience. So I'll be posting about that. Uh, there'll probably be a few more videos and photos on my social media and on my blog, traingeek.ca. So uh, please drop by and have a look. And uh, feel free to comment on this video. Thanks very much for watching.